In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve the coffee cup calorimeter problem. So let's consider this problem that's on the board. 15 grams of calcium chloride is dissolved in 250 milliliters of water in a coffee cup calorimeter. The temperature increases from 25.2 Celsius to 35.7. And our goal is to calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole. So how can we do it? Well, first, let's draw a picture of the coffee cup calorimeter. So basically, what we have is a styrofoam cup. Styrofoam is a good thermal insulator. It's going to prevent heat from flowing into or out of the coffee cup calorimeter. And so what we're going to have is some water, and we're going to dissolve calcium chloride into the solution. And we're going to also have a thermometer that's placed inside the styrofoam cup. Now the styrofoam cup is sealed. Now you may need two styrofoam cups to increase the insulation so that no heat can go into or out of it. Now ideally the styrofoam cup is not perfect but it works pretty well as a, a good thermal insulator. Now the reaction will either generate heat or absorb heat. And the temperature is going to record the changes uh, based on the temperature of the surrounding solution. Now here's the question for you. If the temperature of the solution increases, do we have an exothermic reaction or is the reaction endothermic? Now, all of the heat generated by calcium chloride will be absorbed by water. Or the reaction can also absorb heat from water, which means water could release heat to it. Either case, the heat absorbed or released by the reaction is equal to the heat absorbed or released by the surrounding water molecules. Now we need to put a negative sign on one side of the equation. In this problem, the system consists of the reactants and the products. The surroundings is basically the water molecules. So if the temperature goes up, that means water absorb heat. Because the thermometer, it records the temperature of the water or the solution. So if the temperature goes up, the water molecules have more thermal energy, which means that they absorb heat. So it's endo for the surroundings, but the system, the reaction, released heat so that the water can absorb it. So therefore, for the reaction, it's exothermic. So if the temperature goes up, you have an exothermic reaction. Likewise, the reverse is true. If the temperature of the solution decreases, the reaction is endothermic. The temperature tells you what happens to the kinetic energy of the water molecules. So if the temperature goes down, that means that the water molecules are losing thermal energy, which means they released it to the reaction. So it's exothermic for the water, but it's endothermic for the reaction because the reaction, it pulled in heat energy from the surrounding water molecules. And so that's why the temperature of the water molecules goes down. But the reaction itself, the system, it's undergoing an endothermic process. So now looking at our example, the temperature of the solution goes up from 25.2 to 35.7 Celsius, which means that because the temperature is going up, the dissolution of calcium chloride is an exothermic reaction. So delta H of the reaction, we should expect to be negative. Now, how do we go about calculating the enthalpy change for this reaction? Now, if you notice the units, we need to be in kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules is the unit of energy. So we got to calculate Q of the reaction, and we're going to divide it by the number of moles of this substance. Now, we have the mass of calcium chloride. So we can use the molar mass to convert it to moles. 
So how do we calculate Q of the reaction? Q of the reaction is equal to negative Q of water. So we need to calculate the heat energy that's absorbed by all of the water molecules. And we can do so using this equation. It's equal to MC delta T, where M is the mass of the water sample, C is the specific heat capacity of water, which in this case is 4.184 joules per gram per Celsius. And delta T is the change in temperature. It's the final minus the initial temperature. So we have everything that we need in order to find delta H. So let's go ahead and do it. So let's start with this equation. Let's calculate the amount of thermal energy absorbed by the 250 milliliters of water. Now we need the mass in grams. The density of water is one gram per milliliter. So 250 milliliters of water is equal to a mass of 250 grams. In the case of water, the number of milliliters is equal to the number of grams at this density. So 100 milliliters of water is approximately 100 grams of water. Now the density might slightly change based on temperature, but for all practical purposes, the density of water is about one. Now we have the mass, which is 250 grams. We have the specific heat capacity, which is 4.184 joules per gram per Celsius. And the temperature change, final minus initial. So if we take 35.7 and subtract it by 25.2, that's going to give us a temperature change of 10.5 degrees Celsius. So notice that the unit grams cancel and the unit Celsius cancels as well, leaving behind the unit joules. So let's multiply these three numbers. So it's 250 times 4.184 times 10.5. So Q is positive 10,983 joules. Now, keep in mind, we need to get the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole. So that means we need to convert joules to kilojoules. One kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules. So we got to divide by 1,000 in order to cancel the unit joules. So this is going to give us 10.983 kilojoules. Now, Q of the reaction is negative Q of the water. So right now we know that the process is endothermic for the surrounding water molecules, which means it must be exothermic for the system. So Q of the reaction is going to be negative 10.983 kilojoules. Now all we need to do is we need to divide the kilojoules by the number of moles of substance that we have. So we're dissolving 15 grams of calcium chloride. In order to convert this to moles, we need the molar mass. So calcium has an atomic mass of 40.08 and chlorine is 35.45. Don't forget to multiply by 2 based on the subscript. So the molar mass of calcium chloride is 110.98 grams per mole. So one mole has a mass of 110.98 grams. So let's divide those two numbers. And you should get 0 0.13516 moles of calcium chloride. Now the last thing that we need to do is calculate delta H, which we said it's Q of the reaction divided by the number of moles. So that's going to be negative 10.983 kilojoules divided by 0.13516 moles.
So you should get an answer that's negative 81.3 kilojoules per mole. So that's the enthalpy change of this reaction based on the data that we were given.